Hi, good morning, good afternoon, everyone. Um, welcome. Uh, we are going to get started in just about 30 seconds. Um, but please, as you're joining, if you can add your um, name and your affiliation and location in the chat so that we can see who is with us today. Um, and we will get started in just a moment. So welcome again. Um, I'm going to kick us off. This is uh, Joy Cunningham with FHI 360. Um, and I am really pleased to have you with us. Uh, we um, are, I'm, I was trying to get my video started. Sorry, y'all. I can't turn my video on. <clears throat> um, but I'll introduce myself. My name is Joy Cunningham. I'm the Director of Research Utilization at FHI 360, and I serve as one of the co-chairs of the IGWG, or the Interagency Gender Working Group, GBB Task Force, which is supported by the USAID-funded Propel Health and Knowledge Success Projects. I would also like to acknowledge my colleagues who have co-led the conceptualization and planning for this event, my fellow GBD Task Force co-chair, Francesca Alvarez with PRB, as well as Emily Clark with FHI 360, and you'll be hearing um, and meeting them a little bit later. As most of you know, the IGWG GBB Task Force serves to engage USAID implementing partners in knowledge management activities related to GBB, specifically within the FPSRH programming world. Um, and I have two quick and exciting IGWG updates. Um, first, we, the GBB Task Force, just published a blog exploring the links between technology facilitated GBV and sexual and reproductive health. And we will drop the link to that in the chat so you can access the blog post. Um, I'd also like to share that the IGWG team is developing a new discussion platform where members will be able to connect with each other and post questions to the community to discuss IGWG related topics. We are expecting to launch the platform by the end of the year, so please stay tuned for that. Um, our event today is going to explore the FP Insight platform and how it can serve as a tool for gender experts and practitioners to find and share and organize GBV prevention and response resources. Uh, we will also talk about barriers that we face and finding um, new GBV resources. And we can go to the, um, I think to the next slide. This is our agenda. Um, we'll do a brief interactive activity to explore barriers and facilitators to knowledge exchange in the GBV space. We will have an orientation to the FP Insight platform. Um, and then we'll separate into breakout rooms. Please stay with us. We know this is often a time when um, folks will drop off, but we're hoping we can engage you a little bit to hear about your own experiences with re um, accessing resources and what's helpful. And, and then we'll come back and share that and have a few remarks at the end. <clears throat> I can go to the next slide. So just a few comments about safeguarding. Um, we are obviously discussing GBV content, which um, we want you to practice your own self-care and manage um, your engagement related to the content. We are committed to ensuring that this is a safe space for everyone. And so you will see on the slide, if you do have um, a safeguarding concern during the event or after the event, you can either email me or we can use the FHI 360 compliance hotline, which you can um, access anonymously, or there's also a, a third email address here that you can use if you need to report a safeguarding concern. Um, and then also, of course, we've taken the precautions necessary to ensure that uh, there's, um, we don't have any disruptions during the event, but should that happen, which is unlikely, we will immediately end the call and send a follow-up email to let you know about any next steps. 
Okay. Um, before we dive into the orientation of the FP Insight platform, we're going to start with a quick interactive activity. I think the next slide might have the mentee. Yeah, here we go. Um, so I think most of you have used these before. You can either scan this um, or you can um, go to menti.com and use this code. Uh, to be able to answer the poll question. So I'll give you just, um, just a second to load it. <clears throat> okay. And you should see um, the first question that we wanted to explore is where do you, where do you primarily receive new information and updates in the GBV space? Great, thanks for these responses. It's really interesting about LinkedIn. Um, these are helpful as we're thinking about building up the FP Insight collection on GBV. And also great to see that you're coming to the IGWG, to webinars. <clears throat> and IVP, this is great. Okay, I think we can, um, Move on to the next question. We wanted to hear about the barriers that you might have um, to knowledge sharing. And in particular, we're thinking about the link between the GBV space and the broader FPRH community. And, and you know, sort of um, challenges that you've had. So things like less interaction, um, making sure that we have evidence-based information, normalizing GBV as a challenge, misconceptions, the lack of GBV, PRH projects, siloing, cultural sensitivity. <clears throat> Great, thanks for your responses on this. This is really helpful. We can try talking about addressing some of these as we move through the next hour. And finally, we have one last question. Um, what specific GBV related topics or populations do you feel are underrepresented in the information sources that you frequent? So LGBTQ, disability inclusive. Oh, good, I've got my camera back. Um, you definitely Great, the responses are coming in. So lots on disability, LGBTQ, legal aspects, development programming. <clears throat> I 
Great. Thanks for your participation in this activity. Um, these are all really, really helpful insights. Okay, so I am gonna pass the mic, I believe at this point to Aoife O'Connor, who um, is one of our Knowledge Success colleagues. He's gonna do a little bit of an intro on FP Insight on the platform and how to use it. Thanks so much, Joy. Um, so let me just get my screen set up here so everybody can see. Well, thank you so much. Uh, it's lovely to be with everyone today. So good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, wherever you're located. Um, and as Joy mentioned, my name is Aoife O'Connor, um, and I serve as the community manager of the FP Insight platform uh, and you know, through the Knowledge Success Project. So I'm really thrilled to have the opportunity to introduce you to the FP Insight platform today and to share how this tool can support your work. Uh, regardless of whether you are, you know, a technical expert in the GBV space, or maybe you work more broadly in sexual and reproductive health programming or gender equity focused programs. Um, but before we get started today, I just wanted to um, make a quick mention that uh, I always believe that the best way to learn about the FP Insight platform is to go directly to the platform itself and to click around and explore. So while I am providing a bit of an introduction today, and today will be a bit of a brief introduction since um, we wanna make sure we have time for discussion, but I just wanted to openly encourage everybody while I'm talking to um, maybe on another tab on your computer, or if you have your phone up next to your computer to go to www.fpinsight.org. Um, and to please feel free to follow along with um, wh where we're exploring on the platform as I kind of provide our, our overview today. Um, but with that said, we can go ahead and um, maybe actually take a step back and first introduce you to the basics of the platform, why it was first designed. And for those of you who are completely brand new, you're like, really, what, what is FP Insight? So to go ahead and dive right in. So FP Insight is a free and innovative knowledge exchange platform that serves to help professionals like yourself who are working across the family planning, the reproductive health, the gender equity, GBV, and you know, related fields to find, share, and organize resources for their work. So the platform was first launched in 2021, so we're about two years old now, um, and it was created out of co-creation workshops by a group of family planning and reproductive health professionals who were really seeking um, a user-driven space where they could better save and organize all of the many resources that they were coming across in their work in kind of one safe place. Um, and as inspiration when designing this platform, FP Insight actually looked to other social media platforms that many of you here might be familiar with. Um, like for example, they looked very closely to um, the social media platform Pinterest. And if there's anybody here who has heard of Pinterest or maybe you used it yourself, you might know that on the Pinterest platform, um, that is a tool where users can save and organize resources, like fun resources, like for cooking and for planning weddings. Um, but you can save and organize resources that uh, you um, that you like, and it kind of almost operates like a digital bulletin board for how you can bookmark materials. And um, you'll know that if you create a Pinterest account, you can find resources tailored to your personal interests on the platform's interactive news feeds. And then as you see things that you like, you can save those resources into your own curated kind of digital folders that you can organize by topic and theme. And so with this sort of inspiration from other social media models like Pinterest, FP Insight actually operates in almost the exact same way, except of course that all of the resources that you're gonna find on FP Insight are pertaining to, you know, across the field of sexual and reproductive health. Um, but really it kind of operates as like a digital bulletin board for saving resources. And these folders that you are able to curate when you create an FP Insight account, um, we like to call these digital folders collections. So you'll hear me refer to collections as we go through our training today. Um, but so the kind of fun things, so like I said, this is a free tool for everybody. And when you sign up and create a free account, there is no limit to how many collections you can make. There's no limit to how many resources you bookmark on your profile. So the idea is that when you sign up and create an account, you then um, can create these collections or folders on many different themes and technical areas in your work. 
So for example, you could create a collection, you know, say you have a lot of different technical reports and guidance documents that you have read, you like, or that you are on your to read, to read list about engaging use in programming. Or maybe you have also have a bunch of resources on how to make programs more disability inclusive and accessible. Um, and you could create two separate folders, one on disability inclusion and one on youth engagement. And you could take all of those resources that you have saved and bookmark them into these folders on the FP Insight platform. Um, and it gives you just one nice safe place to save and come back to these tools. But the best part and kind of the um, differentiating feature to rather than just saving these on a bookmark feature on your internet bar um, is the fact that every time that you save materials to your FP Insight collections, uh, those resources will automatically show up in our FP Insight news feeds, which means that others in the FP Insight community can see your contributions, what you've shared. And if those resources align with their interests, then they can also save it into their folders too. So it kind of promotes this really beautiful cycle of learning and sharing that benefits everybody. Um, and similar to other social media platforms, um, there's some fun engaging features um, like the ability to like content, you can reshare content, and you also have the ability to follow, follow other users' profiles. Um, and so when you follow them, you can kind of better curate. So say I have, if I wanna follow my colleagues working in the GBV space, I can specifically identify certain users who maybe have that technical expertise, follow them. So I would be more likely to see GBV related content show up in my feed. Uh, and to kind of get a better understanding of what the community actually looks like. So before we kind of show you the, the live platform and give you an example to, to dive in um, for a little bit more background. So like I mentioned, FP Insight was launched two years ago. We are still growing super rapidly. We now have over 1,500 professionals on the platform, um, and they are based across 90 different countries around the world. So since we launched, uh, all of the professionals uh, on the platform have shared over uh, 3,800 resources total. So there are 3,800 resources that you can explore on FP Insight, and they're on a wide variety of topics that range from postpartum family planning, COVID's impact on health programs, uh, menstrual health and hygiene, GBV prevention, uh, and we also have a lot of materials on super cross-cutting topics that don't always fall specifically into the broader sexual and reproductive health bucket, but things like how to build more equitable health programs or even looking at things like, you know, climate's impact on health and health programs. Um, so really, there's just a wide array of tools that you can find. And um, the really nice thing as well, the, the resources on FP Insight can include a wide variety of formats. So one of the things that differentiates FP Insight from maybe some other resource hubs or libraries that you come across um, that are a bit more academic is that while you can certainly find academic publications like peer-reviewed research articles and white papers on FP Insight, you can also find um, more accessible knowledge products that are in the form of blogs, um, YouTube links to webinar recordings, podcast recordings. People even upload slide decks from conferences and meetings there. Um, and so really just a super wide array of tools from kind of more formal, more academic to more like implementation guides, checklists, things that, you know, could be more helpful to day-to-day -day implementers and program managers. So any resource, really kind of our idea and our guiding principle for the content that goes on the platform is that if it is web-based, so if, you know, it's, it's something that uh, has already been published online, so it can be shared on FP Insight, um, and that it is a resource that essentially could be of benefit to, to professionals who are working in the broader sexual and reproductive health and gender equity space. So even if that means that it has to do with how to disseminate communications materials, that's not, you know, family planning specific, but we all know that those who work on health programs could get better at that. And that's a tool that we could all benefit from. So it does have a kind of a broad, broad definition in the kinds of materials that you can find on the platform. Um, and specifically, I'll say that one of the reasons why I'm really excited to be in community with you all today is because uh, as we probably saw briefly in our mentee polls earlier today, it's a pretty common finding, I think, that technical professionals who work in family planning, as well as those who work in the GBV space, I think I saw the word siloed pop up a few times. You know, we can oftentimes feel siloed in our work or disconnected from each other's work, even though we know 
that there is so much overlap in what we do and that because of how influential gender norms are to health that you know preventing gbv directly correlates to more expansive reproductive autonomy um so while our fields are obviously connected and we know that because we as professionals aren't always as connected as we would like to be that also means that how we share information between our two technical areas can also get interrupted and so you know we're really excited about welcoming more professionals who work in the gbv space into the fp insight community so that you know, all the FPRH professionals who are already on the platform can learn from your expertise and materials that you might share on the platform. Um, you know, and vice versa, you can also learn from them. And we really just hope to help grow uh, the knowledge exchange between our two working areas. And to do that, one of our activities later today is to share with you a GBV focused FP Insight collection that the task force has curated on FP Insight and we are really curious to seek out your input on you know, what you think are any content gaps um, that you would like to see filled in the resources that we have selected so far, um, and really just what else you would like to see on the FPR or um, kind of see in the collection. So before we dive into our discussion section, um, the exciting part is getting to take a look at the platform. So, um, I apologize, today will be a really quick overview, but I will switch to the live site just so you can kind of get a quick glance at what the platform looks like. Um, but so to start for everybody, whether you have an account or not, you are going to go to www.fpinsight.org. Um, and when you show up here, if you do not already have an account and you're not logged in, this is what the page will look like for you. Um, and so you'll notice if you're brand new and you haven't yet created an account, you are more than welcome to do that right now. It only takes about two to three minutes. You're, you know, it's an easy thing to do while I'm chatting. So you will notice that there is a big blue sign up button in this top right corner. So that's what you would click and follow the prompts if you do want to join the community. Um, but today, I think the main things that I just want to point out very briefly um, are kind of highlighting how you can find materials on here. And then also what it kind of looks like when you have the ability to organize materials on here. So um, the important thing to point out is that all of the content that got shared, so all of those 3,800 resources on the platform are actually open access. So if something gets shared on FPN site, it doesn't matter if you don't have an account, you can still view those. So if you see me scroll down on this homepage, I am not logged in. So you know whether I had an account or not, I can still start to view. If I scroll down, I can see this long list. These are all recent things that have been published or added to FP Insight. And so I could click around and explore these. I could explore both the collections that people have curated, or I could even look at people's profiles. This is all open access. Um, and additionally, specifically, since we're talking about finding uh, new information and new resources, if I wanted to search for materials on a very specific topic, um, all you would have to do, just as simple as Googling something, um, you can utilize our FP Insight search bar and so you would just go ahead and click in this open space where it says to search, type a word or phrase, and then press enter. So I could type in the phrase GBV into our search bar. You can hit the enter or return button, depending on what kind of computer you're using. Um, and then this will actually go ahead and load any content that is on the platform of our 3,000 plus resources that make mention to or are pertaining to gender-based violence. Um, and of course, you can further narrow things down with more keywords. You can also use this uh, like filtering button on the side here to play around and get more precise resources as well. Um, but all to say that if you are curious and you want to find more GBV related content or on any other technical area that's in the broader sexual and reproductive health space, FP Insight is a great place where you can do that. Um, just like we were talking about how you can use listservs and LinkedIn to find new materials, this is a great place that you can go as well if you're ever feeling stumped and want to find uh, to see if there's other publications on this topic. Uh, so with that highlighted, the one other quick thing that I'll do is just give you a glimpse at what it looks like um, when you're signed in and you have created an account, because even though you can access all of the content that's on FP Insight without an account, um, you can't do any of the other fun stuff. So to be able to contribute resources to FP Insight, you must have an account. So you have to sign up. Um, and in order to be able to create your own profile where you're given unlimited space to save resources, uh, you also have to have an account to do that. 
So you notice I'm logged in now. So it's brought me again to um, this news feed here. And in order to see where my resources are saved, um, so all you would have to do is go to your profile icon, which is in the top right corner here. And it's gonna take you to a page that shows you what my profile looks like. So on your account, it would show you any information you would have entered about yourself. Um, and then when you click this little My Collections button here, you can start to see this is what all of those curated folders will look like um, with your resources. So on whatever topics your heart desires that you would want to curate resources on in the sexual and reproductive health space, this is kind of what an example folder would look like. Um, and then when you click on one of these, this is the landing page of what a collection would look like. So it really looks kind of like a folder on your computer almost, but every time that somebody uploads content to one of these collections, um, not only is it saved in this folder that you can go back to whenever you like, it also, like I mentioned, is fed into those news feeds for anybody else to benefit from. So you can see that people who are coming across these, they might be liking them, they might be resharing them. Um, so it's just a great way, uh, it's a great tool for knowledge exchange. Um, and then the only other thing that I will mention here is that uh, when you are creating a collection, most oftentimes when you create a collection and you are the owner of the collection, which means your face is at the top of it, so you'll see my face at the top of it here, that typically means that you are the only person who is able to save things in this folder. So it's designated just for you. You can do whatever you want with it, unless you are feeling in a collaborative mood and you would like to create, uh, really take time to curate a collection of resources with colleagues. Um, if you would like to invite colleagues to also be able to contribute, there is a collaborative feature on FP Insight, and you'll notice a bunch more faces show up under mine here, which are many of my colleagues who have joined me in contributing content to a postpartum family planning collection that I put together. And you'll see that there are multiple different faces and individuals who have added materials into this collection other than just myself. So there's a lot of really cool ways that you can contribute content to FP Insight, whether it's by yourself, by whether it's collaborating with colleagues. Um, and we're gonna show you an example now of the GBV uh, or the IGWG GBV task force collection that was created. Um, so let me skip ahead in my slides. So I believe we should have it, oops, sorry, right here. So this is just a quick snapshot, but um, I see, I wonder if any of my colleagues might be able to drop the link to this in the chat. Um, I can also pull it up after this, but just wanted to share. So this is a beautiful, beautifully curated collection that um, the leadership on the task force has put together that includes, it has approximately 30 resources now in the GBV space that has been organized, you know, based off of these sub-technical areas. And we are looking to grow this because we wanna contribute more GBV prevention and response related content to FP Insight. And we are really seeking your input and in how to do that. Um, and so we have an activity uh, as we kind of move into our discussion section today where you all will get an opportunity to explore this collection a little bit, see if there's any gaps and also kind of talk about broader knowledge sharing in the community and you know different opportunities for how things can improve or are tools that other people could use. So to do so, um, the last thing, oh yeah, I can go back to that at the end point. I wanna make sure we have plenty of time for discussion. So in our discussions, uh, breakout rooms today, um, we're gonna go ahead and I believe we will be having two or three breakout rooms. So I think there'll be about five to 10 people per room. Um, we have, I think about 10 minutes per room approximately. And so the main questions that we were really asking people to take a look at is first and foremost, we'll um, have facilitators in the room and they will share the link to that collection. And we'll kind of ask people to peruse through and see if there's any resources that are missing. So you kind of earlier in the mentee poll, you highlighted gaps um, that you feel like exist in the literature in this space. So pertaining to LGBTQI plus populations and disability inclusion. So those are all things we could be thinking about for today. But so we are interested to hear what resources are missing. We also wanna hear what barriers you face when you are searching for new resources that are GBV related in your work. Um, and also where do you go to find and share new, new content? Um, 
So we'll have a facilitator be able to help answer your questions as we move into the breakout rooms. But uh, we will be using a Jamboard to document our uh, answers today. And so I think many of us here have used a Jamboard before, but just in case those are not anybody is not familiar, um, the link will be dropped in the chat. So we ask that you will open this up once it is shared in the chat. And once everybody is set into a breakout room, we will be asking you to contribute content by clicking on these little sticky notes. So you'll see this toolbox that's right on the left side of my screen here. And if you click this button underneath the arrow, it will bring a pop-up box that's a sticky note. And this is simply where you enter um, your response to whatever the question is. So if we are on here, that's this is the question on this page is what is missing from our FP Insight collection? So you would simply enter maybe like LGBTQI plus resources or whatever else you feel here. And then for the additional questions, just make sure that you page through. Um, we have multiple pages here for you to explore. So with that said, I will leave it to the facilitators to uh, take more time to answer any questions in the breakout room but just really looking forward to um, it, hopefully insightful conversation. Go ahead and stop sharing. All right, I think most of the group has been able to rejoin. Um, so hello and welcome back everyone. Um, I'm Francesca Alvarez. I'm a policy analyst with the Population Reference Bureau um, or PRB and I co-chair the GBB task force along with Joy Cunningham. Um, so I hope that you found the small group discussions to be insightful and learned a little bit more about uh, some exciting GBV prevention and response resources, as well as how uh, your colleagues are working to foster knowledge exchange and networking in the GBV space um, and, and challenges that they might be facing as well in, in accessing new knowledge. Um, so I'm now going to ask breakout room facilitators to share just a few one to two key takeaways from your groups. Um, so I'll turn it over to the facilitator for group one. Um, I'm not sure who that was, that Joy or Emily. Yeah, hi everyone. Joy and I were in the same room, so I'll report back. Um, hello everyone who is in breakout room two. My name is Emily Clark. I'm a technical officer at FHI 360 and I support the GBB task force. So um, we had a lot of really interesting insights come out in our group. Um, I really appreciate everyone that took the time to share. So uh, we only made it through the first two questions because we had a lot of input for those. So for the first one, what is missing from the collection? Um, I think some of the interesting takeaways, first of all, were uh, more case studies of successful GBB and SRH integration programming. Um, I think that case studies are a great way to learn about um, successful ways to implement programming. So that was a suggestion. Um, another one was, um, this was mentioned a couple times, was um, more emphasis on GBV and mental health programming. So that was a big one that came out in our group. And the next, for the next question, um, the, 
I think everyone uh, definitely felt that they faced barriers in accessing new, inf new information. Um, one that came out was keeping track of all the resources and research um, that you hear about in passing. So I think we've all experienced this. People share a link in a chat. It's a great resource. And then you don't save anywhere, save it anywhere, and then you can't access it after the fact. Um, another one was getting country specific uh, resources. So I think um, of all our participants today, we have rep representatives from all over the world. And if you're implementing in a certain country, um, it's nice to have access to information and evidence that works in that country. So big thanks to breakout room number one for sharing. And that is all for us. Great, thank you, Emily. Um, I led the discussion for group two, so I can share some of the insights from that discussion. Um, in terms of what um, some group members felt was missing from the GBV task force collection, it was some resources focused on, um, specifically focused on resources for survivors, um, as well as uh, resources focused on GBV specifically in humanitarian settings and resources for GBV referral pathways and samples. And so um, these were some of the gaps that were highlighted and we hope that uh, you can help us uh, fill some of those gaps on, on the, for the collection. Um, in terms of barriers that are being faced in finding new resources, I think we had some similar insights to group one, but um, also talked about um, just uh, the lack of data that uh, is context specific and um, data for uh, the level of GBV that certain contexts might be uh, facing, um, as well as challenges in uh, setting up indicators uh, related to this, to collect this data. Um, there were some challenges related to even just finding time to search for resources, um, resources that, uh, uh, or were implementation guides or toolkits or really provided practical scale up um, guidance um, and also a resource that provided practical examples from the field or actual scenarios. So those are some of the challenges that were shared in our discussion and thanks again to group two for sharing those insights. Um, so before we move on to closing remarks, I would like to just make a request. If you could just take a few minutes to fill out a brief post-evaluation survey. Um, my colleague Emily should be sharing a link in the chat now. Um, and so your feedback on the survey will be really valuable to the IGWG team as we plan future events. So we would greatly appreciate it if you could take just a few minutes to fill out that form. Next slide, please. Um, so we hope that uh, this event has helped you learn more about the FP Insight platform and has inspired you to become users if you haven't been already. Um, and we hope that you've learned a lot about how the FP Insight platform can be a resource to you in your work. Um, so we invite you to join the platform today if you are not already a user. Um, and Emily should be sharing a link to where you can join the platform in the chat. Uh, if you have any questions about the FP Insight platform, you can contact the uh, virtual help desk at info at fpinsight.org. Um, I think that email will also be shared in the chat, but again, that's uh, info at fpinsight.org. You can share any questions you might have um, through that email. Uh, we also want to invite you to help us to continue to build out the IGWG GBV Task Force uh, FP Insight collection. Uh, we've already learned a little bit about some of the gaps in the collection and in hope that you can help us fill these gaps by, some, by sharing some uh, suggestions for resources. Uh, so what we have done is we've developed a submission form for you to share resources for that collection. So in thinking about some of the gaps that we highlighted during today's discussion, if you could actually, if you have any resources in mind um, for some of those areas that we can um, address, please do share some resources through that submission form 
and uh, that link should be shared in the chat. So we really welcome your input on helping us to build out that collection. And if you would like to become even more involved in helping the IGWG GBV task force in curating resources for that collection, uh, you can also become an official collaborator. And that really just means that you would uh, be able to directly add resources to the collection and would play a more active role in helping us to curate resources. So. If you have an interest in becoming a collaborator, please email Emily Clark at eclark at fhi360.org. Um, and I think Emily should also be sharing her email in the chat. Um, I do want to note that the, today's webinar recording will be uploaded to the IGWD website, so you can come back to it if you uh, miss something or um, want to refresh your memory on the FP Insight platform. And again, before you log off, we'll just make another uh, request to please fill out that post-event evaluation survey. Um, your feedback is really helpful to us as we plan future IGWG events. Uh, and finally, before we end the meeting, I do just wanna take a moment to acknowledge my colleagues from the Knowledge Success Project who have co-led the conceptualization and planning for this event. So that includes my fellow GBB Task Force co-chair, Joy Cunningham, and I'd also like to thank Emily Clark and Aoife O'Connor for all their support uh, and efforts organizing this fantastic event. And I would also like to thank Jade Lang and Devin Degnan from PRB for their support as well. And we'd like to thank our colleagues at USAID for all your support in the conceptualization and planning for this event. And of course, lastly, we do want to thank all of you for your attendance, uh, your support, and your active participation during today's webinar. Um, so with that, have a wonderful rest of your day, everyone, and thanks again for your participation.